Welcome again to Joe Stunner Boxing. Hope you're doing well. I'm pretty cold, but that's another story. <laughs> um, yeah, indulge me for a second or two because I want to talk about something that's not really strictly boxing, but I want to draw a parallel between the two things. Um, apart from boxing, my other great love is music. And I've spent the last however many years, I mean, I know, it must be more years than I care to, more decades than I care to remember. Ever since I was a teenager, anyway, I've made music. I've written songs by myself and with other people. I've been in bands, done musical projects. And, yeah, you know, this predates the internet. And when the internet came along and YouTube and all that stuff, suddenly we had a platform to get our stuff out there like every, every other artist does. Um, but the point I want to make is that the sort of music I make um, and I've always liked has never been stuff that's sold. It's not commercial. I like, you know, the bands, a lot of the bands I like never really had hits or, you know, they weren't on the covers of magazines or anything. And maybe, you know, one or two more obscure publications. But but the point, of the, the point I'm making is, you know, I made the type of music I wanted to. I enjoyed it. I loved it. It was a labour of love. And anything that commercially that happened, if I made any money out of it, that was almost incidental. I never expected to make money because I have to accept that what I do is not mainstream. You know. Now, the reason I mention this is because you've got boxers in the in the modern world who 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 may be very good at what they do and they may have a certain style which is very effective and win fights, but they're just not very appealing to the public. And yet, they very often expect to be earning big money maybe on pay-per-view and it seems to me that this is not a realistic way of looking at life you know you can't have your cake and eat it you can't say well i'm i'm not going to try to appeal to any kind of mass audience and then whine when you don't get the financial rewards so for example i never i never really understood i've never understood why i did this but Ben Shalom and Boxer bought out Lawrence Ocoli's, well, they didn't buy his contract out because I think his contract was up, even though there was some dispute over that. Um, I never understood why why they wanted Ocoli, supposedly as a f sort of flagship fighter for Sky Sports. Well, he's he's he has a, a history of not being in very entertaining fights. And sure enough, his first fight on Sky, only, what, days, maybe a week or two after signing with Sky, um was against David Light and he, he bored us all to sleep. It was a terrible performance and a, an extremely boring fight to watch. So you've got to ask the question, well, this guy, this isn't the first fight he's had that's been dull. Why did Shalom insist on, on signing him and, and expect anything else? But there was a Coley, as dull as he he has been throughout his career, well, not all of his career, but for most of it, for much of it, um, expecting to have the big money. And why Why wouldn't he expect it if Shalom's offering it? But I was kind of on the side of Eddie Hearn because Hearn said, look, you know, and Hearn, by the way, invested a lot of money in a Coley, which is probably why he was reluctant to let him go early in his contract. Um, you know, he, he, he stood with him through those boring fights and gave him other opportunities. Um, I'm kind of with Hearn because he said, well, actually, no, I can't match that money because financially it doesn't make any sense. So I think on the one hand, you've got fighters being encouraged to sort of overvalue themselves if certain promoters are prepared to pay them a ton of money. And this is, Shalom's not the first one to do this because, you know, we go back to when PBC first started. They had this great war chest of four or five hundred million, whatever it was, and they were they were massively overpaying fighters. You know, Broner is an obvious example. Um, and you've got you've got like even if you take out the Fury fights, Deontay Wilder's pay per views have they done big numbers? No, they haven't. No, they simply haven't. Um, there was that the fight they had was it the was it the rematch with Ortiz that was that was on. I want to say Showtime. I could could be getting this wrong. Was it ESPN? Or, you know, and it did terrible numbers. And that was the fight that Wilder opted for instead of accepting the hundred and ten million from the zone. So fighters have a very unrealistic 
sense of their worth, but this has been courage, in, encouraged by the people with the purse strings. And as a result, it's created a sort of false economy and an and, and unsustainable economy. Um, now, I mean, let's take, for example, someone like Rigondo, Gamerlo Rigondo, tremendously talented, never really made any big money, did he? Um, Bob Arum and Top Rank let him go. They just said, well, we can't promote this guy. He's he's just, he's dull to watch. He's extremely talented, but he's dull to watch. And it's a shame because talent doesn't always, uh, again, go hand in hand with the masses. As Oscar Wilde famously said, to be um, popular with the masses, one must first be a mediocrity. In other words, if, you, if you're that sort of beige type of, person who tries to be all things to all people you might get away with it but I suppose the difference between what I was initially talked about which is the arts and, and sport is that with sport you have a winner and a loser um, with the arts it's all subjective you know what do you like what do you not like but again to be popular with the masses you have to come at, somehow try to appeal to as many people as possible in a sort of rather vague sometimes abstract way. Now, there is a way that sportsmen can do this in the modern world, and this is the disturbing thing, is that, that it's through social media. Because if you take Ryan and Tank, Ryan Garcia is not a bad fighter. But would he have really got the opportunities that he he has got, and he's got this supposed super fight with Tank Davis coming up, would he have got those opportunities if he hadn't had, you know, however many Instagram followers he's got with social media. I mean, the most recent obvious example is Tommy Fury and Jake Paul. You know, Tommy Fury was paid two million quid for an eight rounder. That's the sort of money Gamerlo Rigondeau can only dream of. And how many times is Gamerlo Rigondeau more talented than Tommy Fury? Is Tommy Fury even... Is there any great difference between Tommy Fury and Jake Paul as in terms of one being a fighter and one being a so-called YouTuber? I mean, I, this is the way that boxing has gone. On the one hand, you have certain fighters expecting to be paid an enormous amount of money, even though they don't have any kind of um, public appeal. And on the other hand, you've got fighters... Uh, some of them are not even fighters who do not have a great deal of talent at all, but are popular with the public through social media predominantly and therefore get paid astronomical figures. So it's created this huge imbalance greater than ever. I mean, there were plenty of talented fighters pre-internet, pre-social media who, you know, didn't get their just reward. But I don't think that the disparity has been so great as it is now. It's just, ridiculously talk about the haves and the have nots it's this is ridiculously um vast this sort of grand canyon of space between the two um i think it's it's an interesting topic and i don't really know what the answer is um, i suppose there isn't an answer i suppose when it comes to getting paid it's just you've got to you've got to promote yourself as is it mickey duff once said if you want loyalty no not Actually, I was going to say, I was going to misquote Mickey Duff. It was actually Don King that said, said it. He said, um, you, don't get for, you don't get out of life what you deserve. You get what you negotiate. And one form of negotiation in this day and age is social media. Follow me. Come over here. Look at me. I'm, you know, I'm colourful. I'm, look, look at what I had for dinner. Look at me. I'm doing a bungee jump. Look at me. I'm hanging out with my friends. And yeah, I'll follow you. Oh, you, you've got a boxing match coming up. Yeah, I'll go for that. I'll watch that. I'll watch that. Meanwhile, you've got, you know, proper fighters who can barely make a penny. Um, and no wonder so many talented fighters go down the journeyman route. At least that way you can earn a grand a week or whatever it is, maybe, on average. Um, but I don't know what the answer is. Is there an answer? Is our economics just economics and we just have to accept what we've got? Um, I will say that promoters... Certainly their role has changed, if they even have a role anymore. Um, I mean, a few of them do still promote. But a lot of the time, um, they let the fighters do their own promoting. Predominantly through social media. 
you know, there are, with major promoters, there are now uh, paid roles where um, fighters are, you know, schooled in how to get on social media and increase their following and therefore increase their audience and therefore increase the people who will pay to see them and increase their purses. This is kind of a new form of promotion and promoters themselves. I mean, the old days are gone. You know, it's just, I don't really know what role they play. I suppose they put on the shows, obviously, but when it comes to actual promotion, it seems to me to be the TV platforms that do most of it. Um, yeah. But anyway, just a few thoughts on the modern world, on how the money is distributed, on who deserves what, who gets what they do deserve and who gets what they don't deserve. Um, and some deserve something and get nothing. It, it's it's kind of sad, really. It makes you wonder, you know, a young kid, if they want to be a boxer, are they going to bother anymore? I don't know. I don't know. I think if you do it for the love of the sport, just like me with my music, you know, I did it because I loved it. It was a labour of love. I didn't really care about anything else. I just, I wanted to write what I wanted to write. I wanted to, to lyrically, I wanted to say what I wanted to say. I wanted to make the music I wanted to make. If you're a boxer, I would just do your thing. If you love fighting, if you love boxing, do it. Be honest to yourself. And then at least you'll get the right audience. You won't get a load of hangers on that will be here today and gone tomorrow. I suppose there is that element to it. But let me know your feelings. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments below. You know, subscribe. Hit the like button. You know what I'm talking about. Much love to you. Thanks for your time. Speak soon. Bye for now.